Good afternoon, KW New England. My name is Chris Tovek. I'm the MCTT over in KW Boston Metro, Boston Metro West, and Chestnut Hill. And I am joined today by the incomparable <laughs> Maggie McDowell. The incorrigible, really. Incorrigible. <laughs> Maggie McDowell. I hope everybody is doing well today. Um, we're going ahead and we hit record so that this video will be available online on our YouTube channel within about a business day. If you can, if you want to check that for all the previous classes, it's always a really good idea. Um, and today's session is about designs. It's the designs applet inside KW Command. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that you are set up properly and how to put together some designs for various marketing collateral. What I mean by that is it, designs is not just a simple, straightforward tool to put together like an ad, but actually you can work on uh, multiple uh, um, types of marketing. So you can do um, social media, any sort of online marketing. You can put together print marketing. And that includes, when I say print marketing, that includes putting together listing presentations and buyer presentations. And a lot of people don't realize this, but you can also create video marketing clips to post online. And we're going to get to that as well. So we've got a jam-packed day today. Um, before we get going, I want to remind everybody that you are welcome to interrupt us and ask any questions. It's preferred that you throw those questions into chat and Maggie will be assisting me uh, in moderating that. Um, and uh, we try to keep all of the questions pertaining to the topic at hand. And if you have any very specific um, user specific issues, maybe it's something that you ran into, let's save those to the very end for our Q&A session. Um, before we get started, does anybody have any questions? Awesome. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen with y'all. And give me one second while I move everything around so I can see you. Perfect. All right. So just a reminder, as always, we have a single unified login system for KW Command, my KW and KW Connect, it looks like this. When you go visit Command, the URL for that is agent.kw.com. That's agent.kw.com. You log in with your username and password like so. And you're brought to this dashboard. So I wanted to take a quick moment before we even get into designs, which you can find right over here, right? Um, by reminding everybody that a very, very important part of design's functionality is having your marketing profile complete. Your marketing profile is essentially like your repository for all of like the basic go-to things, like your headshot, your team or brand logo, things like that. So let's take a, oh, I'm going to give this a five stars. <laughs> there we go. Um, so I'm going to go and quickly remind you where to find that and how uh, to fill that out. So if we go up to the top right corner, you will see hopefully your headshot with your name and your drop down there. You're going to click on that. And from that menu, you will see settings. You'll click on settings. And inside here, the default page that you arrive at is that list of all of your connected apps. Remember, your connected apps are your preferred third-party vendors that you can plug into command. And all of the ones that are connected float up to the top. All the other preferreds are further on down. We're going to skip past this screen and instead move on over to the left-hand side. And it's under the collapsible menu section called Connect Settings. Connect settings only has one option in there for you. It's the marketing profile. It's really one of three profiles you always want to make sure you have complete. There's the legacy MyKW portal that you're probably familiar with if you've been with KW for longer than a year or two. And that can be found by going to mykw.kw.com and click on profile there. The internal profile that we all see when we're searching for people to refer business to and things like that is found on KW Connect. And then this third, and I think most important profile is inside of command, and that's located here. So it's settings, connect settings, marketing profile. When you click on that, you'll be shown this screen here. Now this screen 
you'll notice there's a couple things going on. First of all, if you scroll down, you will see you have a spot for your headshot and a team logo. Now, if you're on a team, you can put your team logo in there. Or if you're an individual solo agent, you can use this as like a brand logo if you have a brand logo that you have. Um, but if you don't have one, don't feel obliged to throw just anything in there because all of the stuff that this feeds into will collapse and look pretty without a logo as well. So don't just put something in there to put something in there. Um, all right, so, and also you'll notice that it does have a recommended size. You don't have to live and die by that exact size. The important thing to remember is that it is squared, right? Because if it's not squared, you're gonna get squished. All right. All right, so when we scroll on down, it's how your name appears, your agent license number, your team or brand name, if you have one, your title and designations and your bio, your phone numbers, your fax numbers, emails and websites. Hopefully your agent website is live. Scrolling on down, you've got your market center information. And also keep in mind that unlike the two spots up top here, this placeholder for the market center logo, you just load the logo as you find it. And I know it looks squished on this form. It's just squished here. So for instance, if I go to my agent website where this feeds to, if you look up at the top left corner, you'll see that logo appears correctly. So don't panic when you upload your market center brokerage logo here and it looks squished. It's just this little placeholder here that it looks squished. Um, scrolling on down, um, depending on your office, you may need to have additional legal, legal or compliance information in there. Check with your MCA about that and then any of your social media links. And if you're a super nerd like Maggie and myself and you have a, a Pixel ID or an analytics, Google Analytics ID, you can put those there to, to help track all of your website visitors as part of your portfolio of online stuff. Okay? so. Remember, you always want to make sure that this is filled out before you get to designs so that it feeds all of this into the various designs for you. You're saving a ton of time. All right. Maggie, did I miss anything on this page? No, you pretty much covered it. I do want to mention, too, sometimes that, that license logo, that license number at the bottom, um, there are a lot of templates, email templates that KW has that utilizes that particular box. So just fill it in anyway, because what happens is if you try to send that email, you'll get some errors because it'll try this one here you're referring to. Uh, no, the one for the agent. Oh, the agent. Yeah. Gotcha. Which is yeah. right up here. Yeah. So it doesn't hurt to fill point. it in. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. So again, remember to locate this. It's you clicking on your name and you click on settings. And by the way, special note, I know that you see something that says profile here. This is not it. All right. If I click this, all this is is just a prettier version of our internal KW Connect profile. Okay. So it's always settings that you go to. Okay. Awesome. So without further ado, I'm going to bounce back here and we're going to dive right into designs. Now, remember, all of our app names appear when you hover over them. But if for some reason you want to see that whole menu all at once, you can always click on the red KW logo and it will unhide your entire menu for you. And you see here we have our designs applet. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And if you are a designs user already, you'll notice that a couple of slight, very subtle changes have taken place. One of them is we used to have a giant plus button at the bottom to create new marketing collateral that is moved up to the top right. And instead now it's a, a clearly defined button that says create design. Okay. So, uh, You'll notice here, I have a bunch of stuff going on. If you haven't used designs lately or ever, you will not see this because what this is, is this is a library of marketing pieces I've already created. So don't worry again, if this looks different, um, this is a library of things I've already created. And what's nice about that is as you grow your, you know, your quick go-to marketing pieces, you can filter through all of these right up here in the top right. So I can filter by email template designs I create, social or online posts, print, and video. Okay, so I'm able to filter through all of those types here. If I'm looking for something specific, and I can also sort. All right. 
You also have the ability to import designs from outside. So if you have like a PDF or anything like that, you can actually click that import design button and it will bring you into a separate area where you can go. And if this loads up for me, you can then work with externally created marketing collateral. And what I love about this is we have this really cool feature where if you import right there in the middle, a PDF file, if it's a correctly produced PDF that has Adobe like uh, layering, it will try to unpack all of those individual elements for you and make it editable. Now it's not a perfect system because if it's like a copy of a version of a copy of a PDF, you know, it might have degraded over all of those instances, but if it is a properly formatted PDF, in most cases, it will allow you to go and edit that. Now, I will, a little asterisk, a caveat is, remember, if, if you see somebody's awesome marketing, you know, you don't necessarily want to go outright and steal it, but if it's something that's um, collateral that you created elsewhere and you want to pull in, it's a really great way to get caught up and fill out your library of marketing. Um, you can also create something from blank. But what most people do is they actually utilize the templates. So I'm going to back out just so we can see how when we're going and starting a new design, how we would do that. So here we are again at designs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new design. So I click create design and it's going to ask me, am I creating an email template design, a social media, a print, or a video? So I think, Maggie, why don't we start with like a social media, because I think that's the most frequently used, right? It's the most popular. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on social, and then I'm going to click continue. Before I do, I do want to just mention that you have the ability to import photos and text from a listing. If it's specific to a listing, I'm going to do that once I get in here. But if you know that you're going to be marketing like a just listed, you can do this and it will prompt you for some information. I'll show you that in a second. Yes, so it's I, not your last opportunity to do it, but it is nice. Yes, to do it. yeah, it's a way to like get ahead of it. So, uh, so you click on social and you click continue. And what happens is when you go into one of these sections of templates, you will see that there's essentially two menu areas that you can work with, right? So on the left-hand side, I have a menu of all of the types of collateral that, uh, you know, in the library that I might be looking for. Like, so what is the purpose of my design today? Am I going to be marketing to buyers? Well, here's some things that you might market to buyers. Am I marketing a listing? Well, here's various aspects of like marketing a listing. Is it a coming soon, a for sale, a just listed, just sold? And as you drill down to any of these types, it will then um, show you all of the types of marketing collateral for that. So if I select just listed, now I look along the top and these are all of the formats available for that type of marketing collateral, right? So if I have a just listed and now these are all of the types I have available to me, let's say I wanted to do door hanger. I don't know why door hangers are in social. Did I pick the wrong one? <laughs> <laughs> right? So uh, you did not. They started mingling the other day. <laughs> oh, <they did>. So <laughs> it, you'll see that there's two formats of door hangers for some reason in the social. Um, or if you're familiar with social media, if I want to do an Instagram, we always know that's square. So I would click on square. And these are all the square ones that are formatted for Instagram. So if I go down here, social wide is generally used for anything in your Facebook um, timeline posts or your Facebook page posts or Twitter or, or LinkedIn, right? Square is generally used for Instagram posts. Social stories is used for Instagram stories, which are timed out. Um, here you have a very, oops, actually they got rid of all the Twitters. Um, you also have a couple of other, and keep in mind that if you have those left and right arrows, you can scroll through. I'm not gonna get through all those because these don't belong in social. So. Let's say I wanted to do a social media post and I'm going to do squared. 
And I really like this design. You'll notice all of these designs are updated very frequently. So always come back and check on them. And you'll also be notified if you, if you have your designs widget turned on on your dashboard, your homepage of command, it'll always show you the most recent or, or newest designs. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna say, I want to advertise a recent, uh, a just listed property. And I really like this design. So I'm gonna click use. And it's going to open up my workspace and all of the elements of this design are already built for me. All I need to do is replace these placeholder images and text with my own. Now, this is where our marketing profile comes in. If there's a space on a postcard or a social media post for a headshot or other information, because if you look down the left hand side, I have the ability to add my headshot, which comes from my marketing collateral. If I click text, uh, logos, it has my social media logo, other elements. And this is where, Maggie, and I mentioned the KWLS, where that little checkbox prompt. One of the most amazing things about this is you have the ability to pull your listing information and photos directly from your listing, as opposed to having to upload and download them to your computer. So let's say, again, because this is my just listed, I want to pull a particular set of photos for my listing. All I have to do is I could type my listing address or KWS or any of this information here and it would prompt me for that. So for the purposes of today, and because I know there's always something for sale at this place. So here's a list of listings. Now I do wanna remind everybody that you have by virtue of KWLS, which is our giant internal MLS, which pulls up all MLSs from all the various boards we're a member of, you can search for listings that are not yours. So I do want to stress that, remember, there are very specific rules, especially the NAR ethics rules. You should not, and generally are prohibited in most states, um, shall not market other agents' listings without their written consent. So while you might see something come up here, it doesn't mean you have permission to use any of that material. You have, you should only, only, only be using your um, own listings for this. So for the purposes of today's class, I'm gonna say that this one is my listing. I'm gonna click select and you'll see what happens. It actually pulls in all of my listing photos. And if up on top, I click on listing details, it even pulls in the details like the description and other things from my MLS listing, okay? So I'm gonna come back here now I'm going to say, here's my template that I'm working on, and I need to update it for my listing. So first of all, I'm going to click on all of these are individual elements, and I can click on any element to either edit it or replace it. You'll see how it highlights each section. It's not unlike if you're familiar with Canva or Photoshop or even in like Microsoft Word when you're working with text and photos in there. So I'm going to leave this, but I'm going to update this address here. If I double click this, it actually lets me inside of here go and just type right inside this element. And then if I click outside, it just instantly saves that element as you move along. All right. Now, what's nice about this is this saves your template as you move along every few seconds or so. So if you ever get interrupted or have a spotty internet connection, um, you don't have to worry about losing all of your work. It should remain in place and you can always come back to it. All right. So I updated the text there. Now, if I wanted to, I could, of course, go and just pull the information from the listing details but sometimes it's best to just type it out, right? So let's say that this is not a two bed, it's a, a three bed, it's a two bed, one bath. It's a little bit smaller. And let's throw a one in front of that because I'm feeling expensive today. All and right. It, and it just, you guys, if it's too hard to type in the little boxes, because sometimes it is, if you click on the typewriter at the top, yeah. there, um, it will actually open up a side panel, in which case you can go ahead and um, adjust it through the side panel, which is sometimes something I use all the time. That's true. Thank you. Yeah, I like to usually type it. 
it, it, I like to type it in there because it, it helps me to remember where I am as I go. But yeah, that's a really good point, especially on a smaller or a laptop screen, right? So, um, and then when we get down to the, what says the KWDBA name, um, this is where if you haven't done so, you do want to upload these logos from your market center. Um, so Maggie, where can we find those logos if they don't have them already loaded up? Right here. So if you go to kwconnect.com, select marketing, and the very first tab is logos and branding. When you click on that and scroll down, this is where you'll see this example, Premier Properties, and it says a search bar right here. Just type in the name or the market center number that you're at, and it will give you a zip file for these. All right? So I know the Boston Metro one is 624, but if I also type Boston Metro, that would also come up, right? Now, when you download that, depending on the type of computer, it should download as a zip file. You may need to unpack it, but it's always a good idea to then take that folder full of all the, the various versions of the logo and keep that someplace handy on your computer. In addition to keeping that on your computer, you can also upload those to your, um, to your um, account here. So. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and upload this now. And Maggie, I guess afterwards, I could then jump yeah, over. You can show the assets afterwards. Yeah, yeah. show the assets afterwards. So, I, 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 for one, have downloaded all my logos into the assets because I might need a black and white logo or a white logo or a, a transparent logo. You are going to use pretty much all of them, which I can see Chris has done in his. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do the same thing. Great minds think alike, right? So, you know, what's great about that whole folder full of logos, it has probably what 12 or 15 different versions of your office's logos. And you never know if you're going to have like a dark background that you need a lighter font in front of or vice versa. So it's good to always take all of those and, and to specifically call out, if you want to make a note of this, there's a certain file type that allows for transparent backgrounds. This is one of the biggest things that people get frustrated with sometimes is because if they use this a static JPEG it has a solid background. Well, that solid background then moves with you into the canvas. So if you want to have a transparent background, always use, there we go, the, the PNG, yep. So whatever the file names are, just upload the PNGs. That's generally what I do as a rule of thumb. So I've highlighted this. Now watch, instead of having to type things out or move things around, all you have to do is select the thing that you wanna replace. And when you come over here to the left-hand side, you've got two options. One is if you hit plus, it'll just add it to the, to the um, uh, piece that you're working on, but in no particular place. But if you hit the little recycle or replace logo, it will actually swap out the highlighted element with this one. So if I click on that, boom, see, it just swaps that out. And then if you need to adjust it, like I do a little bit here, I think I'm gonna move this down just a smidge and then maybe make it a hair bigger, right? There we go, I like that. Well, you can do the same thing with the photos from your property listing. So while we have in our workspace, um, all of those uh, brokerage logos, you can also jump back to here and go to your photos for your listing that you attached and say, which one of these photos do I run a place here? And I do the same thing that I did with the, with the logo with the photo. So first I click on the, the photo here so that I see it's highlighted with that blue outline. And then I decide which one of these photo, photos I wanted to use. I'm gonna go with this sexy photo here. Boom. It's, it looks almost like the same property, doesn't it? It's a very similar color palette. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I changed it. Um, so uh, that's how easy it is to swap out photos and logos here. Now, when I'm done with this, I can choose to do one of two things. I can choose to share it directly from designs mm -hmm. to that social media link, or I can download it. Um, Maggie, did I miss anything before I wanted to hit on the download or the share? Um, I mean, you can show how to add text if they want to add text. Uh yeah. To, like if they want to add on top of that. So if they wanted to add something else on top. Oh of that. yeah. So let's yeah. So let's go back. So remember, you know, I did kind of gloss over this. Thank you. So 
along the left hand side, you've got a menu of things, right? So to be clear, if I click on images, this is where like my headshot and other images I might have added. If I click on text, it allows me if I want to add totally new text, I could right? logos, there's the brokerage logos, additional elements, kind of little iconic type things, your KWLS. So those are your menu of things there. So if I wanted to add something else inside, I could simply select that and you'll see it drops that text body or that element there. And then I can move the box around and I could say, let's say, um, let's say I want to say um, the name of the building, which is Wilkes. I want to say it's a rare Wilkes passage unit. And then I can move this around. Hold on. There we go. So I'm going to move this around here, stretch this out there. And then let's say I want to change. Now, what's nice about this is I can then go and make edits just like you would in like a Microsoft Word document. So whenever I have text selected, you'll notice you, know, you have all of your text controls that appear along the top, right? So if I want to change the font, I could do that. I could move it to Arial. Arial. Is it Arial or Arial? I don't know. Arial. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, I could make it bold or not bold, italicized, right? I could change the size up, right? So all of these things are doable right here. So you can work with uh, the preset elements, but you can also add your own elements. Does that make sense? If I wanted to add addition, uh, additional um, assets, uh, I could actually use the add option here, right? So if I want to add a new headshot while I'm working on this to my um, assets, I could always add that from here. And it even offers to add that from various cloud accounts as well, if you have them attached. Or you just click on this right here and it'll open up a pop-up and then it'll show you your imported images if you have other images that you wanted to use. When you're ready to share this, again, you can go up to the top right corner, you can click share. And if you have, if you have your social media accounts connected to command, you can actually share this directly to your page without even leaving. This comes in handy, especially if you're doing multiple, you know, um, properties in quick succession. You can also click download. And I know a lot of agents prefer to use the download because they want to then, you know, um, tweak the language and the text and things like that. And they prefer posting it directly to, to Facebook. If you do download it, you do want to make sure that you select the proper file type. For images posted online, you've got two options. Generally, you would use JPEG. This is used for social media and a lot of websites. If you're creating a, a graphic that you intend to use on like a high quality website, you could also use PNG and that's a higher quality version of an image that's generally used online. Now you'll see there's some other options in there. You can create PDFs. Um, and PDFs are generally used only for print, but sometimes you might create something that you intend to attach to an email and you might want it to be a PDF. So that's when you'd use the standard for online. You only use the PDF for printing when you intend to print like or send it to a printer and you need to make sure it's very high resolution. So when it's printed, it's not pixelated. So again, for online use, especially with social media, you always use JPEG, you just click download and you'll see it prepares that image and then you'll get a download instruction. If you're in Chrome, you'll see in a minute, uh, the download notification will appear. There we go, right on the bottom. Um, if it's in Safari or Firefox, it may act a little bit differently, but generally the same way. Um, you'll notice, remember I said that you do have the file that is saved uh, every few seconds. Um, if you wanted to, do like a manual save, you can do that right here. Um, and then you can also rename the file beforehand right up here. So if I want to say KWME test one, I could do that and then just click outside. And it gives me those updates right there where it says pretty much every time I make an edit, it just skips a second and then boom, saves it for you. 
Uh, Maggie, before I leave social media and go to print, um, anything I should touch on here or do we have any questions from people? Uh, no questions so far. Cool. All right, so why don't I exit this particular design and let's jump into print. So here we are back at the designs homepage or dashboard and I'm gonna go and create a new design and this time I'm going to do print. I'm gonna click continue. It's gonna load up all of the various options in our workspace for print. And the reason um, I wanna do these broken out separately is because a lot of people just assume it's like, oh, it's maybe a postcard or a flyer. But there's a lot of other things. Like for instance, if we go under business basics, looky, looky, we've got business cards that we could use these designs for business cards in various formats, horizontal or vertical. We have email signature uh, graphics that we can add to our email accounts. We have standardized letterheads that you can create and use on a one by one basis or send off to a printer if you wanna have a big stack of them made up. Then you have some basic social media branding for like your cover, even though this isn't print, they keep it under your business basics there. Um, but specifically, I wanted to look at two things in here. Um, one is the listing presentation, because while we can do postcards, right? If I click for sale or just listed, we have all of the obvious things in there. But if I go to listing presentation, we have a number of buyer and listing presentation templates that we've created. Look at this. We have one, two, three, four. We've got 10 now. I didn't realize we had 10. I thought we had like four. Quite a few different levels. We have 10 different types of listing presentations. So I'm going to go ahead and click onto this first one to open this up because this is a little bit more involved than if you were just doing a postcard. And I want to make sure you understand the navigation and the clicks through. So when I open this up, first of all, you'll see that we're, we're, we start off with this blank page. Well, that's because we haven't added pages yet. So what you have here, because it's a whole listing presentation or a booklet, you've got all of these pages that appear on the left-hand side to choose from. Now, it's built in a way that you could use all of them and it would be a very thorough, a very comprehensive listing presentation. But by no means do you have to use all of them. You can pick and choose which pages you want to use. So let's start at the very beginning <laughs> and click on listing presentation, the cover. So just like when I add elements and I had that plus sign, if I add a page, I hit that plus sign and watch what happens. So I don't have anything yet. When I hit the plus sign, you'll see now I have this. Now, if I click the plus sign here, I now have more than one page going on. So where do we find these pages? You can find them by clicking on the pages in the bottom right corner. If I open this up, it now shows me I have these pages, right? Now I started with a blank one and I don't wanna keep that blank one because I want my very first page to be the cover. So I'm gonna click on that menu there and hit delete. Confirm, yes. There we go. Now the very first page of my listing presentation will be this cover page, right? And the second page will be the instructions page, right? So now you can go through and add each one of these that's relevant for you. Let's skip a couple of these and go to maybe comparables. And let's just stop there. Now, obviously this isn't a complete listing presentation, but it touches on a couple different types of functionality that I wanted to show you. So at the very beginning, this first page here, right? You can go just like we had before and update the font of the um, headline here. You can even swap out the photo if you wanted to. All of these things are set up to stay as is, but if I really love a very specific font, let's say you have a brand and your branding is consistent across all of your marketing collateral and you wanna make sure that the font is the same, you could do that, right? And as you make those changes, again, it will save automatically for you. But remember that only the pages that you see on the right-hand side that you've added are actually part of this print booklet you're creating, okay? So always be mindful of that. And as you're working on that, you can of course hide it and then come back here 
to go and add additional pages. But a lot of people confuse these two things, right, Maggie? I mean, I, I hear that a lot where it's like, I All worked on time. something. But people it's, will just click on the left, start editing it, think yeah. they've done it. And then, yeah, because they're just looking at it. They haven't and then added it. All over again. <laughs> yeah. So this is just a preview on the left of templates you can use, right? And on the right is the pages you've added. So if I want to add this page, I have to click plus, and then you'll see it appears now down here, and then you can move on. And so make sure that you select the page on the right and then make those edits. And it works the same way. I highlight anything and I can edit or replace it within reason. Actually, is there any, I don't think there are any elements that are not editable. Like if I wanted to go through, I could actually go and delete every one of these until I got to a, a blank page. Uh, yes, everything, yeah. everything there you can delete, add, do whatever you'd like to it. So what I tell all of our new agents or seasoned agents who just started using designs is if you haven't done so, always come into designs and create your listing presentation and your buyer presentation. And then all you have to do, if you've gone through and customized all of your pages, the only thing you need to do when it's time to um, prepare for a, an actual listing presentation is to go into the relevant pages where like you have your comps and replace those comps. And then that's all you have to do. Right, so it really reduces the burn. It reduces the the production time, if you will, of that listing presentation. So all you're doing is swapping out those couple of property specific or neighborhood specific pages. Yeah, this is. I mean, this is really important, guys, for the buyer and seller presentations. You cannot leave this to the last minute. This is not something you. Know, there's so many pages to edit, and there's so many little things in there that you have to change to make it your own. Add your name. There are plenty of things in here. This is like, these are the things I'm going to do to market a house. These are the things I do to help sell your house. And if you don't do those things, then it doesn't apply to you. And it'll still print out if you don't change it. So spend the time up front to create your template, save it with a name you're going to remember, more like listing presentation. And then from now on out, instead of starting from the templates, you're going to start from your designs and then go ahead and then edit it as, it, as you get your listing. Now, when you make these print uh, pieces, you have a couple of different options. One is, of course, depending on your office, you may be able to print them in-house, right, on your, at your market center, or have an agent services person print them for you. You have the ability to download and send them to your local trusted vendor to print. Um, and depending on the piece, you may also be able to just order them directly through command. And if you do, you'll see this order print option up here where you can actually have that printed direct and drop shipped, which I love. Again, whenever you're doing print, unlike the social media options, when you go to download, you make sure that that file type is selected for high quality, which is PDF for printing. That is extremely important because if you send the, the other file types to your printer, Hopefully they're good enough to call you up and let you know that the file is not the correct format. But if it's an automated service like a Vistaprint and they might not double check it for you, right? You know, they go and they print it. When you get those, they'll be very kind of, you'll see a lot of pixelization. It's not gonna be pretty, okay? So always use the PDF for printing for all of your print collateral. Um, any questions on the listing presentation? And uh, we have a, how do we save these presentations? Yeah, so remember in the top left corner, you can, it will auto save as you go. If you're unsure, you can always click save one last time and you'll update you there. And then to download it to your computer, you just go up here, click download. Let me just get rid of that. Download, you select PDF for printing. You double check if you need to include bleed in certain limited circumstances, like a postcard, Make sure you select that. If the images go off the side, you may want to include bleed. It'll show you right here when you include that and then just click download. It'll take a moment to compile that, especially those of us with a little bit older computers, wink, wink. Uh, you know, so give it a second and then you'll see that design gets downloaded right there inside your browser. And then you can 
uh, um, work with it from there. Randy's asking, where does it save to? It depends on the type of computer device you have. It generally, you know, on Windows machine, it'll go to the downloads folder. It may also go to the desktop. I think actually what he's asking, oh. well, he may be, well, that could be it too, but also can you show them where they go now? So if they want to come back and edit it. Gotcha. Great question. Yeah. So let's say I'm done. So I click done <laughs> and I come back here and it brings me back to the dashboard for our designs. And you'll notice what's nice about this is it will always show you the most recent designs you worked on. So right now I have all types here. So it's conveniently the very first one, right? So all I have to do is go and click on that and it will open it back up for me to edit. So that's what's really nice about this is, is once you, to Maggie's point, once you create and save that templated master version of your listing presentation and your buyer presentation and maybe some other letterhead and things like that, it will always be in there for you to go and quickly jump into and make edits to for your individual needs. And remember, once you start to compile a large library, you have a couple of options. You could always go in here and clear out some clutter, but um, also you can go and make a copy. So if you have that master and you don't wanna keep using the master, you wanna leave it there to reference, what you do is you make a copy and then work on that copy for that new listing presentation, okay? Awesome, so um, Maggie, anything on the print that I should review before we take a look at the videos? Uh, yeah, I would actually just, if you don't mind covering where they can update their assets. Oh, right, yes. So if we jump into uh, import designs, this is a great shortcut to go and look at what you have available internally for your asset. So you'll see along the top, you've got templates, you have my designs for things that you might've uploaded, and then you have assets. So here you go. This is the kind of the one-stop shop for all of those various things you might want to upload and have handy, right? So your, are, your headshot's already gonna be in there because hopefully you have your marketing profile done. So all your basic info will be there. But let's say you have some other images, right? So I have this headshot in there, but I want a different version or different size in there, right? Or if I want some handy text, right? Like a phone number or my email address, my bio, things like that, you can have those handy. So you don't have to keep them someplace else. They're simply in that menu of assets that you can click and drop into each one of your designs as you go. Here you have the logos. And by the way, you can organize these too. So I happen to work with three market centers. So to keep all of the logos handy, I actually added a folder. So you can add several folders to have types you know, to categorize the, 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 the logos and other things in there. There are your elements, videos if you've saved, and other files. So again, assets, that's the shortcut right up there. I'm gonna go ahead and exit. And I wanna take it a little bit of time because the one thing Maggie and I were saying earlier is we don't see a lot of people using this really, really cool feature for videos. So I wanted to take a moment and take a look at that. So I'm gonna click create design and I'm gonna select video. I'm gonna hit continue. And it's going to ask me about which neighborhood I want to highlight. So right now we're limited to like a neighborhood highlight video, right? In the future, I think that they hope to have additional little video clips in there. So these neighborhood names are controlled by the same uh, people over at Nextdoor. Um, that we use uh, for our next door neighbor, our, our neighborhood nurtures, right? So the neighborhood names we don't come up with, they're the neighborhood names as defined by next door. So if I wanted to come up with one like for Bay Village, you'll see that there's a lot of Bay Villages out there in the world. So you might have to scroll and find a specific one. Let me try and, I'm trying to think, or Maggie, if you can think of one, uh, Chestnut Hill. Have to add. Yeah. yeah. There we go. <laughs> See, there's Chestnut Hill in Newton, Massachusetts, right? So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to hit next. And now it's going to auto populate based on the market data that it sees within KWLS. A lot of things like your average home price, um, pri average price per square foot, all this stuff. Now, this is not perfect. I just want to 
throw that out as a caveat. It's based on um, a, a very narrow set of data. And so if you think that you want to adjust any of this, you can do that here. Like if I think this should be closer, like if I want to ballpark it and say it's around 450, I could do that. I can make all of these edits. Our house price is on the rise, on the decline, holding steady. I think we all know it's on the rise <laughs> um, right now. And you can update any of these things. And what's great about this is also it pulls in features that those neighbors in those neighborhood groups identify as being integral to their particular neighborhood. So in that neighborhood, they say that you know, a lot of people, they're focused on nature, they're politically engaged, they're vehicle enthusiasts. If you wanna change any of those out, you can, right? So if I, instead of the vehicle enthusiast, which I think might be a little bit dry, you know, I could remove that and I could go uh, towards, um, there are a lot of dog lovers there. Well, that sounds weird too. Let me try a different one. Let's go with um, oh, yeah. hipster. Hipster, yeah, mm -hmm. hipster. <laughs> right? So they're into nature, it's politically engaged, and hipster. Now I can uncollapse other sections. Looky, looky, it's that marketing profile information, and it just auto populates all of that for me. The only thing I need to do is throw my phone number in there for some reason. And then where's my market center? There's my market center. I'm going to adjust the cropping here. There we go. Um, hit next. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a small video clip that you can then download and throw onto any number of social media. You can put it on your Facebook page, your personal Facebook profile, your Twitter account, your Instagram. It works for all of these. And it's a professionally produced little video clip. So I'm going to go ahead and I think it should allow me to preview play. And if not, but if I hit save, what it'll do is it'll download that file to your computer for you, and then you upload. Let's see if it allows me to preview play it here. great thing to post on your Facebook on a monthly basis. I love that. Thank you, Maggie, for saying that. Why not, especially if you farm a very specific neighborhood once a month, right? Just set yourself a reminder and it always pulls that snapshot of like what's happening in the market based on your the KWS feed, of course, from your local board. So yeah, you might want to, you know, double check some of the numbers, but also I do want to remind people that even though the numbers necessarily aren't exact at any given time. And of course, if somebody looks at that a week later, it's stale info. But, you know, I think one of Jason Abrams' very frequent points is people are looking for like that starting point of information. They're, they don't expect it to be scientifically accurate at all times, right? When they go to Zillow, do they really honestly believe that the Zestimate is correct? No, they don't. They sometimes pretend they think it is, but... Well, the sellers do anyway. The sellers do. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it's like 30% higher. Mm -hmm. small, small Zillow note. Does everybody remember how the founder of Zillow had listed his place for sale out in San Francisco? I think it was. It was like a million dollars off. It was like some stupid number off. Yeah, it was like some <laughs> Rick Cray, like 30% off. And it yeah. was just like the estimate. Yeah. So anyways. Um, all right. So yeah, so please take advantage of those videos. Um, I don't want to gloss over the email template. So I do want to also just pop in there very briefly. But the, uh, to be honest, the, the email templates could almost be their own class. So I just want to take a moment to point out that you can create templates for your emails. These do come in handy um, for various 
um, cam email campaigns you can set later on out of your campaigns template, right? So if you click on email and hit continue, it will give you a number of uh, options. Like right now, I think there's, there we go, 72 templates you could start with. And the names generally kind of hit where they are, but unfortunately they don't give you like a preview. So you're gonna have to go by what you see by the name. So here's like monthly newsletters. Here's that annual tax day reminder. Let's like actually use that just as a, an example real quick. If I click on next, it'll open up that template and see it gives you like a starting point so that you can go and create um, an email campaign later and use this template, right? So you see these places where it has Agent first name, agent last name. Those are, those are. Uh, I, I forget the name, the terminology, but it's like the mail merge field. Yeah, the, the fields, the merge the, fields. Yeah, the merge fields. So that when you set up an automated email campaign or smart plan, if you're using this particular email template, it will put all of those in there for you. So you don't ever, unless you want to get rid of it, you don't ever want to edit those things. But you can, of course, go in here, and if I wanted to swap out this image or edit the text in any of these text fields, I could do that there and then save it so that it is available to use in your smart plans and email campaigns. Mm -hmm. I will mention too, for all of these templates that they have and all of these emails, don't spend a lot of time editing them, right? Yeah. This is not where your time should be spent. Your time should be spent on the phone and reaching out to people and lead generating. And this is part of lead generation, but don't reinvent the wheel. This stuff is already done. Like the, it is the, you don't, you don't need to do anything. Like you said, you can, if, if you're doing something more exciting then absolutely, you know, you can do use all the designs for its fullest potential, but just use the, utilize the templates that they have in here. It's, they're so good and that they're relatively easy to switch out listing pictures and things like that. You don't need to go nuts. You just have to do the basics really. Yeah, I think we tend to overthink the, the, the graphics and all these other things and the verbiage. And I see all the time agents go down a rabbit hole where they're looking at that text, right, about tax day. And it's perfectly acceptable, but for some reason they just feel the need to like swap out like terminology and it's gotta be in my voice and all these other things. Yes, some of that can be important, but to Maggie's point, do not, you know, all of a sudden you're 90 minutes into creating like that one paragraph about the tax day reminder, which yeah, yeah it's just not a good use of your time. Um, um, Chris, where do, yeah. where do you find that video now that you've done it? So yeah. just like uh, just like all of our print items, if I want to go and filter in my designs uh, dashboard for video, there's that Chestnut Hill one that we just created and there are two previous ones I've created. And just like your other assets, I can always click on that, download a copy. So I could save it, but if you're running around and you wanna just download it and finish, finish it up later, you can do that. Um, you can also um, rename, delete, you can share directly um, on social media from here, but they'll always be here. I will say also, it's a good idea to go and declutter when you can. Right. Um, Marie Kondo, the place. <laughs> You know, uh, get rid of old stuff that are that's very specific that you won't reuse because you have just hundreds and hundreds of up to date templates that are updated on a regular basis. And a reminder that if you go to your dashboard for command, you have the ability to have that designs widget on your dashboard. So if you want to be reminded of new designs, what I could do is um, up in the top right corner, click on the customize home, and then there's that designs update. I could just drag that up to the top and click apply. And now I'll be reminded of the most recent designs. And what's nice about that is I can even preview them all here. And actually, as I'm doing this, it reminds me of a big biggie that I do want to go back to and point out. We now have a quarterly magazine that is put together by KWRI please take advantage of this. This is the coolest thing. So it's a magazine, so it's of course in print. I'm gonna just jump in here. And on the left-hand side, I believe they use a little bit of slang. They call it a zine, right? <laughs> like magazine was too long for them. So it's under uh, lead generation and personally branded zine, right? 
Now look at this, every quarter. Thank you, Chris, because I would never figured out why they call it that. Now I get it, it just blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> they removed the MAGA. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, so you can just go in here and click on this and it is so cool and it's a, such a sharp magazine, everybody. Please take advantage of this. I'm gonna open this up here. Look how beautiful this is. And look, available for print order. Look at and just like your just like your listing presentations, you add the pages as you go, right? And look how gorgeous all of these pages are. Now, obviously, some things like a quarter in review, you might have to take a look at some of that stuff to insert your specific either state or county or your farming area, whatever it is that you want to highlight. But the vast majority of content is just ready to go. You don't even have to edit it. Just the marketing, uh, just the you know the market stats and like your headshot things like that. Look at that. So please take advantage of this magazine. It's a beautiful piece that they put together every quarter. And with that, I think we'll just open it up. If anybody has any other questions or or anything else for us, feel free to jump in or unmute yourself. Going once, going twice. <laughs> Maggie, we were so good. There are no questions. They have no questions. No questions. <laughs> I have one question. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm just kidding. You know you love me, really. Um, with um, if we wanted to print out postcards yes. through this, obviously there's plenty of templates on there. But if we wanted to print them through command, like what's the best size? Great. I tried to do it a couple of times, and it doesn't like the sizes I picked. So. Great question. So a lot of times it, when you run into sizing issues, it might be uh, because the it needs a slightly larger side for bleed. So when you are creating a postcard in designs that you're going to later use to substitute the one of the four templates that are available for the postcards and instead use your custom design, when you go in there, make sure that when you save the PDF, like I said before, Make sure, obviously, you save the high quality version, but also there's an option in there for bleed. So there is a link in the postcard section of campaigns that gives you the exact size. And what you'll want to do is then go over. I'm just going to try and see if I can very quickly get to a postcard. Um, say I'm using this one. So when I go to save that postcard, one of the options in the download section is for bleed and amount of bleed. So I have PDF for printing, I include bleed, and then it will do so automatically. It'll basically size it up for you for that bleed. You can also adjust it here if you need to. So for some reason, it's not saving at the exact dimensions. Just double check the dimensions that are cited in the postcard tool in campaigns. I forget what it is and just make sure it matches the total amount, the uh, total size there. That's probably the issue. Maggie, did you want to add something? Yeah, I mean, generally that's what I end up doing though. To be fair, I actually just, I think the last time I did it, I think I just took the dimensions and I just did, I just started with a blank template and I did gotcha. it. Gotcha, yeah. Um, but 90% of the time when it's a sizing issue, it's it has to do with uh, it's, 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 it's waiting. It's expecting that you're going to give it a postcard size with the bleed sizing added on. And that's usually what's missing. Yeah. Does that answer your question? And, and, and if that doesn't work, definitely reach out to, to your designated person at your office, um, have them take a look at it. There are six by nines is the default. And if you want to do a large postcard, it's six by 11. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right, two o'clock on the button. We crushed it. Thank you guys for being so awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen so that I can give you a big wave. <laughs> <laughs> have the glasses. Day. You gotta sign off with the glasses on. Oh, I don't have time to get the glasses. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll do the glasses. Thank you all for attending. Mm, oh, now I guess I'm using the rest of your day. Thank you very much. You're awesome. Thank you.